Okay, so uh, the recording has begun. So let us start with the analysis of finite slopes. We are right now, we are concentrating on finite slopes. And then we will move on to infinite slopes. Okay, so in finite slopes, like for analysis, there are like various methods. Okay, so one is called as the Swedish circle method. Swedish circle method of analysis of uh, finite slopes. Okay, one is called as the Swedish circle method. And one is called as the method of slices. Okay, so two ways in which we can analyze the finite slopes. Number one is the Swedish circle method. And number two is the method of slices. Okay, now uh, we will first <clears throat> we will first uh, start with uh, Swedish circle method. So you can write down the heading. this circle method. So uh, here, uh, basically in the analysis, our ultimate aim in this analysis, our ultimate aim is to find the factor of safety. Our ultimate aim is to find the factor of safety. Okay, so ultimately what happens is at the end of our analysis, we will end up getting an, getting a factor of safety. We'll get some equation for the factor of safety. So that, that is the, like, uh, the end of the uh, analysis. We end up getting a factor of safety. I hope I am clear till now. Uh, now, for this, let us start with a diagram. Let us start with a diagram. The diagram is the same like that of what we have uh, discussed in the previous class. The diagram is similar, not exactly same, but it's similar. So we'll draw it. So I'll draw it here. Let me make some enough space. Okay, so suppose this is the slope A, C, B. Suppose this is the slope, then uh, we will be analyzing, we will be trying to ultimately find out the factor of safety, FOS, factor of safety. So uh, now uh, for we first do it for a cohesive cell. Okay, first let us do it for a cohesive cell. Cohesive soil, in cohesive soil, you have to know one fact, which is angle of internal friction is zero. Okay, angle of internal friction is zero in cohesive soil. Okay, these are some points that you should always take note. Okay, so someone may ask you in MCQ, multiple choice questions in competitive examination, that for cohesive soil, what is the value of phi? 
Then for that sen, what is the value of phi? What is the value of phi for loose sen, for compacted sen, for all these type of sens uh, and soil? People might ask you, what is the coefficient? Uh, what is the angle of internal friction? So uh, you have to remember the range, and for that you need to study the books where the ranges are given in a very proper order. Okay. So for cohesive soil, you should know that the phi is zero. Okay, now uh, uh, let me just erase this part to make space for the diagram. But please note it down. Now, when the uh, when this will fail, let us let us try to uh, assume that the failure occurs like this. Failure occurs like this. In this manner. Okay, failure occurs in this manner. Now, if the failure occurs in this manner, that means what? This is the location where the soil is breaking. This is the location where the soil is getting separated or the soil is breaking okay now uh, so if the soil has to give some resistance okay then where should it give the resistance the soil should give the resistance at this point only okay because it is this point where the soil is getting damaged okay it is this soil where the this part where the soil is getting damaged so the soil should give a resistance here, okay, to save it from uh, destruction. Okay, it's no use giving a resistance at this place or this place or this place or this place. It's no use because the soil is fading here. We have to give the resistance here. Okay, so am I clear till now? Am I clear? You can type Y, you can type C. And I would like, uh, like, I would like the numbers of responses to be more. Okay, not just one or two or three like that. Then only I can understand that like all of you are following me. And if you think that I am going fast, you can tell me, I will control my speed. If you think that I am going slow, then you can let me know. I will try to fasten the process. So now, this is clear. So the soil will not give a resistance in any other portion. Soil will give resistance along the failure plane. Okay, so that thing you should be clear. Now, So how will it give a resistance? How will it give a resistance? It will give resistance through cohesion. Okay, it will give resistance through cohesion. Because it is what? We are taking clay soil, cohesive. So the resistance can be given by the cohesion because we are considering clay and cohesive soil. Okay, so the resistance will be given in this manner. In this manner. You can draw these arrows. Okay, this will give the resistance and we denote the cohesion by Cu. Okay, and we call it Cu because it is undrained. It is undrained because through clay, if this is a sample of clay, the water takes some time to go out. Okay, so if water takes some time to go out, so at the very instant, the water will not go out. So it is undrained. Okay, but in sand, if we take a sample of sand, then as soon as we give the load, the water will directly take no time. It will directly go out. So it is called as drain in case of sand or gravel. But in clay, in this type of soil, which is clay, the water will take some time. It will not move out instantly as we give the load. So 
since it does not move out instantly, so at the initial stage, the water is not drained. So that's why we call it as CU, undrained. Now, uh, now what is happening is this failure, this failure surface is like an arc of a circle. This failure surface through which the soil is failing, we can take it as an arc of a circle. This, this failure surface is a part of a bigger circle, actually. Okay, so this, uh, like this is the bigger circle maybe. Okay, this is the, maybe the bigger circle. Somewhere it will be there. Okay, some bigger circle will be there. So it is a part of a bigger circle. And circle has a center, isn't it? Circle will have a center. So somewhere, suppose this part, this point is the center of the circle. So let us join these lines. So we are trying now moving on to the analysis. I am telling you the steps. So first of all, we assume that this failure surface is a part of a circle. And obviously this circle will have a center. And uh, we, we, we consider this center. And then we join the center with the two ends of the failure. Plane. So suppose this one is the center. So we join the two ends like this. Okay, we join the two, uh, two ends, we call it as O. Okay, and suppose this angle, we call it as theta. And these lines, these lines will be what? These lines will be the radius. So we call it as R. Okay, we take it as length R. This will be the radius. So these lines will have a length of R. We take R as the radius length. So this will have a length of R. If you have any doubt at any point, please let me know. Please let me know. So this is done. Now uh, we have marked the points also properly. OK. So uh, what will happen is now, uh, there will be some, uh, what is actually driving the soil to move away? Like what is actually giving the disturbance to the soil uh, so that the soil is failing? The disturbance is given by some moments. Okay, because the moments uh, are actually trying to rotate it in an angular direction. This soil, this soil along the failure plane is trying to rotate like this, isn't it? It's trying to rotate in this manner. The soil is trying to, ultimately it is going in a, some sort of a rotational motion. So some sort of disturbance, obviously due to disturbance, the soil is failing, but the disturbance is a moment. That's why the soil is giving, taking some rotational motion, okay, while failing. So, the main disturbance is due to the moment, and we call it as the disturbing moment. Okay, we call it as the disturbing moment. I hope I am clear. It's like the applied force. Okay, applied force, we are, this here the force is the moment. Okay, 
and that moment is giving the disturbance and that's why the soil is failing and so we call it as disturbing moment and uh, what will happen uh, if the soil wants to give a resistance then the soil will have to give what the soil will have to give a resisting moment resisting moment in order to resist the disturbance okay so i hope i am clear till now th that the disturbing force is the disturbing moment and the resisting force is the ultimately the resisting moment okay so now uh, what we have to uh, do is we have to proceed towards the towards deriving the formula for factor of safety so factor of safety general in general the factor of safety is the resisting force by disturbing force means in this case the factor of safety will be the resisting moment divided by the disturbing moment. So please uh, don't forget it. The basic uh, theory of factor of safety is that it is the resisting moment or the resisting force divided by the disturbing force. Okay, this is the theory for factor of safety. So please write it down. Okay, so now, now when we have to like uh, do the analysis we will do the analysis in terms of the <clears throat> in terms of the moment now okay so we have to generate the equation for the resisting moment we have to generate the equation for the disturbing moment and then we put it in this place and we get the factor of safety so this next step is the is finding the equation of the resisting moment and finding the equation of the disturbing moment okay so first disturbing moment uh, for that uh, let us take a point o about which we will calculate the moments let's take the point o about which we will calculate the moments now uh, this disturbing moment is there any like uh, is there any external force is there any external force in this system can you tell me is there any external force in this system yes or no y or n please please reply y or n is there any external force in the system I will not ask you why you have written it, but just give me the response. No. No. Yes. So there is no external force. Okay. So what is the force that is giving the disturbance? What is the force that might be giving the disturbance? If there is no external force, what is the force available that is internal what? force? What? Internal force. The weight of the soil. Okay. The weight. It is the only force that is giving the disturbance because there is no external force. This soil sample has some weight. So this soil sample, this soil sample has some weight. And this weight is the only force. This soil sample, this is the, this soil sample having some weight. That weight is the only force that is giving the disturbance. So, if we consider W as the weight, 
okay if we consider w as the weight so weight will be somewhere like here maybe we just uh, i'll show you somewhere maybe it is falling like this w weight okay so what is the more uh, disturbing moment now if the blue is the weight okay which is the only force that is available then the moment is what weight into this distance i am taking we are doing the analysis about the point o okay we are doing the analysis about the point o so uh, because you see uh, about the point o only the soil will soil is like oscillating okay i am showing it to you in another figure about the point o like this uh, like this is the slice like it's like a pizza right show you a b point so this is the point a this is the point b okay so similar is uh, going on here this is the point a this is the point b okay so this is like having some pendulum sort of motion okay like this okay it is going like this okay it is going like this or it is moving like this it is having some sort of a pendulum type of motion okay like this so and that is what is failing this surface that is what is giving the destruction applying the destruction so since it is like oscillating about point o that's why we take the moment about point o okay so this slice of pizza okay if you just imagine okay it's like oscillating about point o that's why we take the moment about point o am i clear till now please type c okay thank you so done now uh, this w into this x bar is the disturbing moment so in place of disturbing moment we can directly write strong W into X bar. Then let us find out the resisting moment. Okay, we have found out one value. So now we need to find out the other value. This cannot edit it. Something is wrong here. Just give me a minute. So this one was the diagram, okay. And now the resisting moment will be given by what? The resisting moment will be given by Cu. The resisting moment, as I've already told you, the cohesion is giving the resistance. So resisting moment is given by Cu. Okay, 
Now you should always remember that this length is R. Okay, and if this is theta, then what is this length? This length is R theta. Okay, so you can write one line first of all. Length of arc AB is R theta. Length of arc AB is equal to R theta. Okay, so this is the length. Then uh, now we are just a few moments away from getting the required resisting moment. Okay, so one more thing that you need to understand is what cohesion is acting to the surface. Okay, so this cohesion, this cohesion which is happening here is acting to the surface, see you. Okay, this surface surface so this surface uh, what is the area of this surface what is the area of this surface so area of this surface is what length into width okay so which we take unit width we are taking unit width unit width you need width, this is, this is equal to one. So area will be what? Length into width. Okay, this surface I'm talking about, this is the surface. So at this surface, the area will be what? This length, which is R theta, into what? Which is actually this, ultimately this area will be R theta. Okay, this is the area. Length into width. Okay, it's like this one. Suppose this is a bar. Okay, we need to find out the area of this bar. If this is A, B, C, and D, if a force is applied here, P, now at this point, what is the area that we want? If this is of unit width, the area will be what? AD into what? Same thing. Okay, cross section area. AD into what? We have used the same concept in the flow net also. Okay, same way we have done it, the area will be R theta into 1. So what is the total force? Total force is, total force, Cu is, we know, Cu is uh, the cohesion. Okay, Cu is cohesion. So total force will be, total cohesive force or resistive force, I'll, I'll try to write resistive force. Resisting force is equal to Cu into area, or we can say Cu R theta. Resisting force, Cu R theta. Okay, so Cu R theta is the force that is going on like this. Okay, in this manner. And what is the moment of Cu R theta about O? about this point since we are taking the moment about O in W also in case of W also we have taken the moment about O because this if this was W the distance of line of action of W from the from O was X bar we have considered so now this was the uh, how we got the disturbing moment now the resisting moment also we have got the force similar to W we have got the force which is Cu R theta. Now, what is the distance of this force from O? Distance of this force, which is the force is moving along the arc, isn't it? Cu R theta is going along the arc, along the arc AB, along the arc AB, which is the surface of the circle, isn't it? Surface of the bigger surface of the bigger circle
is the surface of this bigger circle is moving along the arc AB. Distance of this arc from O is what? The radius. Distance of the surface of this circle, because CU is moving along the surface of the circle. Distance of the surface of a circle from center is radius. So what is the final resisting moment? It is Cu r theta into radius. So Cu r square theta. So what is the final factor of safety? It is Cu r square theta by W x bar. Am I clear? Type Y if you are clear. I'm glad that you have understood. So I'm not, I don't want to like proceed with a new term. This is the first one. Okay, method of slices will be next. Okay, tomorrow we will discuss method of slices. Okay, so uh, like for today it will be fine today it will be enough try to digest it okay properly so any doubt you have you can ask or else thank you very much for your time Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Yes, you can ask. Sure, my network was bad. Can you please send me the recording? Uh, I could only which, hear half half. Which part? Mm. <laughs> Sir, it, since the network was bad, it was like you can, everything. You, you can see the recording also. I will be uploading it just uh, like after half an hour. You can go okay, through okay, the you can, okay, sir, thank you. Oh. you can you can you can see the recording no problem it will be it is sir, in well YouTube. yeah yeah i i upload the recordings in the youtube link okay sir you can see watch it again and again no problem thank you sir okay sir yes sir a w part two yes Sir, W part two mass of one W equal to M into G of MZ MZ MZ. Okay, sir. Mane, kilo kilo newton is it? Uh -uh. Hey, to have a case it now. Okay, sir. Sir, yes. Hello? So, can you please repeat the last part? The last Which part. One? Um, after the total resistive force. This one? Yes, sir. After CU into A. After that part. Okay. CU into A. So, uh, wait. I will not do the diagram. Okay, I am just writing it. So, CU I have the into diagram, sir. Yes, Cu into A. So along this surface, the Cu was acting, isn't it? Yes, sir. So area will be what? Length into width. This cross section, we cannot see the cross section, right? It is 2D. So we cannot see the cross section. It is actually what? Length into width, isn't it? So length we already got this R theta, and width we are taking as 1. So it becomes Cu into R theta. Okay. It's the same as like this. Suppose there is a bar 
and you need to find out suppose the load is applied here in this cross section okay so if this is of unit width suppose unit width okay this bar and suppose this length is suppose a suppose this length is a and this length is b okay so what is the area on which p is acting what is the area p is acting on the area a into one So same thing we are using, since it is of unit width, the whole diagram is taken as unit width. So area will be length into width. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank Anything you, sir. Else? Okay.